particularly in the age of Trump, right wingers are accused of being too extreme. And they've said, can you help us make the case that that's, that's not true? I would actually argue the opposite. And I want to lay out the case for you today that um, everything from moderate left to the current Democratic Party, the DNC, they actually have a corner exclusively on the political extreme in the United States. As a matter of fact, I, I, don't, I don't think that the, the right wing is such a big tent now. I don't think it's capable of being as extremist as the left. Certainly you can take maybe a 0.1% and attribute it, but I'm talking about as an actual platform. So people well, what do you mean? Okay, let me lay out a case for you and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Let's take the big issues. Abortion. Okay, most conservatives are pro-life. We'll give you that. We believe life begins at conception, but we're past that now. Roe v. Wade was passed. So let's look to the super extreme example of the Supreme Court, uh, well, not nominee anymore, but Judge Justice. Gorsuch. Had you ever met President Trump personally? <clears throat> not until my interview. In that interview, did he ever ask you to overrule Roe v. Wade? No, Senator. What would he have done if he if he'd asked? Senator, I would have walked out the door. He's about to bomb a clinic. Here's the thing. <laughs> the main <laughs> fight from the right is we just, at this point, we don't want to pay for somebody else's abortion. And we Amen. want to curb them at this point. Sure. Certainly the most horrific of them. Let's contrast that with the left, whose policy is taxpayer-funded abortion, on demand, no questions asked, period. Their recent presidential candidate, and Hillary, Clinton, Hillary Clinton, by the way, didn't specify, saying, well, only in the first trimester, a couple of weeks, she believes that the unborn in the United States, basically up until the head leaves the birth canal, have no constitutional rights, period. I want to ask you about some comments that you made over the weekend on Meet the Press regarding abortion. You said, quote, the unborn person doesn't have constitutional rights. And my question is, at what point does someone have constitutional rights? And are you saying that a child on its due date, just hours before delivery, still has no constitutional rights? Under our law, that is the case. I know, I'm, uh, I'm Gosh, an extremist terrible. because I think that <laughs> that's, that's bone-chillingly scary. Let's move on to economics, taxes, okay? Uh, on the right, many of us, myself included, want a flat tax. Some people don't see that as extreme. I certainly don't. If you make $100,000, you pay $10,000. You make a million dollars, you pay $100,000. That seems fair to me. But let's take that off the table, okay? Let's take the flat tax, the income tax off the table. Let's see if we can find a middle ground. On the right, the extremists that we are, we have, we see that we have the highest corporate tax rate in the entire industrialized world. And we don't want to lower it to the lowest rate. We just want to lower it to a rate that's competitive with your oh so beloved <laughs> socialist European counterparts. It's extreme to want to lower the highest corporate tax rate to a middle level? More extreme than Bernie Sanders being okay with a 90% income tax? Radical socialist. Dwight D. Eisenhower was president. I think the highest marginal tax rate was something like 90. It was 90. When you think about 90%, you don't think that's obviously too high. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, again. <laughs> no, it's good salad. We're, this is just a room full of extremists who are being flagged on the terror You're watch right. list. Right. They're saying Bernie Sanders is extreme, right? Because he's never been mainstream. Mm -hmm. Okay, is it more extreme to uh, want to lower the corporate tax rate or allow people to keep more of what they've earned than Hillary Clinton wanting to raise the estate tax, the dex, death tax to 65%, which by the way, is a tax on tax. It's more extreme to believe that you should be able to keep more of what you earn. It's more extreme for people like us, the extreme right wingers, to believe that we should be competitive with the rest of the industrialized world with our corporate tax rates than it is to want to tax somebody more than half on an already tax. Let's move on to race relations. <laughs> Conservatives are racist, right? This is the Absolutely. argument. When it comes to race, are you? it's just you're still out of touch. You, you can't check your yeah. privilege. Okay, well, let's get into that. Uh, on the right, the extreme view that we have is we want to do away with affirmative action. That's the most extremist view we have. That's what, they'll, that's what they'll flag us for. Yep, we want to judge people based on the content of their character, as it were. I believe somebody uttered that, too. It was that's probably a, a member a of the clan. Yeah. fashion. Extreme? Probably a white guy. Let's, let's take that and contrast that with quotas. Segregated graduation and safe spaces, as you see in libraries and Harvard at their graduation now. And even the DNC going as far as supporting a borderline terrorist group in Black Lives Matter. It's not extreme to support a group Black Lives Matter who have been the root cause of many a cop car burning, but it is extreme for us to say, hey, maybe you shouldn't support those people who are burning the cop cars. <laughs> We want to open a dialogue! Well, do you want to open the carburetor? It's on fire. <laughs> <laughs>
Climate change. This is the one where we're accused of being extreme all the time. Again, this is for kids who are in college when they talk about right-wing extremists. Let's, let's check all the boxes Denier. and you can send me your tweets at S. Crowder. Most of us on the right, I think most people in this room accept the concept of climate change. I think most of us, if you look at the polls, accept that humans might be a contributing, significant contributing factor. Now, we're called extremists or science deniers simply if we don't believe that it's an imminent catastrophe that only the federal government can fix, the same people who run your post office. <laughs> we're extreme science deniers if we say, you know what? Climate change might be happening. Uh, humans might be contributing, but I don't think the EPA can fix it. Well, let's contrast that with the left, who they believe in carbon taxes, putting entire industries out of work, proposing the punishment of climate skeptics, as Bernie Sanders and non-scientist guy in chief, Bill Nye. And we can bring that up. Don't we have his quote from Bernie Sanders? Yep. Yeah. Along with supporting binding resolutions, including things like population control, taken from the one child policy of China. It's extreme for us to say, I don't think the federal government can solve the problem of SUVs and cow farts, but it's <laughs> not extreme to be right in line with the policy that led to babies being drowned in Chinese bathtubs. Ooh. I, I just, I, I, again, I, I, and I know I'm probably out of touch. I don't see the extremism on the right. Guns, this is the one, of course, we're right, gun to our next, clinging to your guns and religion. Let's talk about this, guns, okay. You're an extremist if you believe that the Second Amendment applies to all law-abiding citizens. If you believe that the Second Amendment is self-explanatory, it applies to all law-abiding citizens, the left considers you an extremist. Let's contrast that with the official dissenting views in the landmark <laughs> Heller versus DC case, where liberals like Justice Stevens argued that actually private citizens have no right Gosh. to own a firearm whatsoever, even if the purposes are lawful. Oh, good Lord. It's extreme for us to say the Second <laughs> Amendment allows private citizens to have firearms, but it's not extreme for Justice Stevens to have actually said that there is no common law right to self-defense. It's extreme for me to want to carry, if I'm not a criminal, we all support background checks. If you're a felon, if you're a violent criminal, you don't get a gun. That's an extreme point of view, not to say you don't have the right to protect your family. <laughs> This doesn't even get into the issue of the open borders from the left, the, the, the idea that no people are illegal. Oh, geez. Uh, which, on. of course, is apparently far more moderate than the extreme view of believing that people should come here legally and respect the processes in place, like my mother, who's a legal immigrant and pays taxes, a self respecting American citizen. God what a, what Sucker. A Sucker. <laughs> Let's go. And the one that's most important to me, we talk because this is the one that everyone, it's easy. They talk about social justice warriors, but they don't really understand the root cause of it. Again, it's all, it's all a part of the prism of leftism freedom of speech. Here's why you hate fat, land whale, blue-haired feminists, okay? <laughs> why am I an extremist? Why is everyone here considered an extremist? To the, what is required to be considered a free speech extremist to the left? Okay, it's simple. Do you believe that the freedom of speech is absolute? Period. Is that it? Do you believe that nonviolent, even offensive, offensive speech is absolute? Right. Anyone in this room? Yeah. And you believe that's protected by the First Amendment? Yeah, yeah. Pretty According pretty to today's left, you're an extremist. Fantastic! Yeah, it's more extreme to believe that freedom of speech, even offensive speech, is absolute than it is for 51% of current Democrats to want to ban speech. And many of them even want to go as far as simply banning any anti-Muslim bigotry speech. And here's the crazy thing, right? I'm an extremist because, like, well, hold on a second, let's, let, let's ask the questions. Who determines what hate speech is? Exactly. Who decides what extreme speech is expectable? And here's something, isn't it funny that we're deemed extremists by the people who conveniently, isn't it convenient for them that the, to the big government left, that those answers consistently and exclusively lie with those in positions of political power? <laughs> because they can't be extremists. <laughs> Only people like you and I. It's not possible. Maybe that's why the official platform of the left. All of this leads to, when we're talking about free speech, which is, which I, it's the First Amendment. <laughs> How important is it? <laughs> it's Amendment Number One. Number One. They asked me on right Sky there. News one time. Why, why do you think that? Uh, why do you believe that the Second Amendment is as important as your right, like freedom of speech, or something? Because it's literally <laughs> right up there with the freedom of speech. And maybe this is why all of the things that we've outlined are so considered extreme. This is why the official platform of the left makes it incapable for their members to answer very simple questions on the First Amendment. Let's see. Will you tell us here today simply? This is a this long clip, I warn you, but it's important. We'll never entertain or advance a proposal that criminalizes speech yeah. against any religion. That seems so Sir, I, would, I want to, as I said before, you referenced as context for your question. Well, there's no context on this question. I'm just asking well, you. There, there just was. asking you. you all right, let, let me ask a new question. <laughs> Will you tell us here today that this administration's Department of Justice 
will never entertain or advance a proposal that criminalizes speech against any religion. That seems well, straightforward again. Sir, it, it, well, that's not a hard question. Mr. Well, actually, Perez. it is a hard question in the sense that <laughs> well, it, uh, when you make it's, it's really not that someone, difficult. No, I'm, well, I'm, it's not I'm a asking trick. you here today. Uh, pretty easy. You don't need you a number two pencil and a scantron. The Department of Justice will never entertain or advance a proposal to criminalize speech against any religion. Again, sir, if you if you have a proposal, <laughs> he can't do it. He can't do it. <laughs> uh, that you are considering. This is uh, Perez, right? Yeah. Review that proposal. Okay, here's my proposal. Our... Here's my proposal. <laughs> I'm asking you to answer a question. That's my proposal. I'm proposing Put it in your that language. you answer this question. Will you tell us here today that this administration's <laughs> Department of Justice will never entertain or advance a proposal that criminalizes speech against any religion? Again, sir, uh, if you give All right. the concept what? of Mr. Chairman, the question, with, with, with the yield for a second, question. Conduct I, will, I will not yield, but I will let I think I can, we can straighten this out. I will not yield. <laughs> I've been looking for a way to fit that clip in for a long time. So, okay, let me re for those who weren't clear on the question, let me crystallize it for you. Um, for the left to believe that you are an extremist, all that is required is someone like that to ask you the question. Hold on a second. Do you promise that you will not sign any bill or support any bill that criminalizes any speech of any kind? If you were elected a representative and you were able to answer that question, yes, I promise I will not ban speech of any kind, you're an extremist. Hey, this video is taken as a clip from the full show, Daily Show at ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club, where it's available exclusively $69 a year. That's less than $6 a month, less than two expensive cups of coffee, or you can feed an African child, but what would you do? Just buy coffee or join the mug club. Daily Show, ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club. See you there. Don't feed children.